Increasingly, people fluent in the actual science of epidemiology are asking hard questions about these policies. Here's a physician and researcher from California called Dr. Dan Erickson. Erickson and a partner just delivered a 50-minute briefing on the latest numbers from California. The video they made has been viewed millions of times in a few days online. The bottom line is, after looking carefully at the data, these two researchers have concluded that California should end its shelter-in-place order. Watch. We've seen 1,227 deaths in the state of California with a possible uh, incidence or prevalence of 4.7 million. That means you have a 0.03 chance of dying from COVID-19 in the state of California. 0.03 chance of dying from COVID in the state of California. Is that, does that necessitate sheltering in place? Does that necessitate shutting down medical systems? Does that necessitate people being out of work? These are serious people who've done this for a living for decades. They have in their hands the largest currently available data sets on this question. And the question they're asking after analyzing all of those numbers, are the lockdowns worth it? So what is the answer to that? What's so striking is that so many politicians, the ones enforcing the lockdowns, don't seem at all interested in asking it. Instead, they're bullying forward as if nothing has changed. Just today, the San Francisco Bay Area announced it'll be extending its lockdown until the end of May. That's five weeks from now. What is the scientific justification for doing that? They didn't tell us because there is none, none. You may remember what they first told us back in February and March. They said, we have to take radical steps in order to quote, flatten the curve. Well, six weeks later, we're happy to say that curve has been flattened, but it's likely not because of the lockdowns. The virus just isn't nearly as deadly as we thought it was, all of us, including on this show, everybody thought it was, but it turned out not to be. Hospitals never collapsed. Outside of a tiny number of places, they never came close to collapsing at least not from an influx of infected patients. Instead, something remarkable happened, something amazing, really without parallel in American history. The opposite happened. Thanks to the lockdowns, hospitals have begun to collapse. Why? From a lack of patients. Politicians who couldn't pass ninth grade biology decided that practicing physicians should not be allowed to calculate the risk of transmitting the virus. They're just not qualified, unlike us. So these politicians ban so-called non-essential procedures, many of which are in fact essential. The results of this policy? In many hospitals, entire floors have been mothballed. Doctors and nurses are being furloughed in the middle of a pandemic. This is insanity. It weakens our healthcare system. Its effects will last for many years. That's all from the lockdown. So how long will we have to live with these lockdowns? Earlier this month, Dr. Anthony Fauci, whom we are apparently required by law to respect no matter what he says, suggested that in fact we may never be allowed to resume normal life. If back to normal means acting like there never was a coronavirus problem, I don't think that's going to happen until we do have a situation where you can completely protect the population. If you want to get to pre-coronavirus, you know, that might not ever happen in the sense of the, the fact that the threat is there. And we should tell you, that is the same Dr. Fauci, and keep this to yourself, because as noted, it's not allowed to show any skepticism whatsoever, but that's the same Dr. Fauci who also announced that shaking hands, the ancient custom of shaking hands, should be done away with forever, and then a week later told Snapchat that actually it's fine to have sex with strangers you meet on Tinder. That was his epidemiological advice. Other experts on television warned that full-blown lockdowns may be necessary until a vaccine or effective treatments are found. What they didn't mention is that scientists have never produced a single approved vaccine or antiviral drug for any coronavirus. So that could be a while. And that thought seemed to please frequent television guest Zeke Emanuel. Realistically, COVID-19 will be here for the next 18 months or more. We will not be able to return to normalcy until we find a vaccine or effective medications. Is all that economic pain worth trying to stop COVID-19? The truth is, we have no choice. Oh, the truth is we have no choice. 
Well, here's a handy guide for you in case you watch a lot of television. When a political operative like Zeke Emanuel, someone with a long history of lying, begins a sentence with the phrase, the truth is, you should probably be on guard. When he ends that sentence with, we have no choice, you should be terrified. And in fact, that's wrong. We have always had a choice. Other countries made different choices from ours, in fact. They're not waiting for a vaccine to open their societies. Why would they do that? There's no precedent for doing that as a scientific matter. For example, we spent millions of dollars and more than a decade trying to find a vaccine for the SARS virus. Scientists never developed one. That's a shame, but did we halt life in the United States in response? We didn't. In fact, you may not even remember that any of that happened. The striking thing is the science has not changed that much since then. Unfortunately, American politics have changed a lot, and that's the difference.